Chapter six, setting up your database. All right. Uh, so before we continue working on our dashboard, we need some data. In this chapter, we will be using a PostgreSQL database using the at Vercel Postgres package. Cool. So we're gonna need a GitHub account. We're gonna need a Vercel account, which again, you can sign up with your GitHub account to Vercel. And we're gonna need to create a Postgres database. And then we're gonna see the database. Create a GitHub repository. Okay, uh, we can do this. So let's go to github.com. I'm not using my main GitHub here, um, just to keep it more clean. So we're gonna go to the top right here. We'll click this little plus, new repository. I'm gonna call this um, YouTube Next.js dashboard. You can call it whatever you'd like. And that's pretty much it. And then press create repository. So this is our repository now. And okay, for now it's it. Create a Vercel account. So I believe I already have one. Let's see. Right, so I am, I'll sign out real quick, log out. So you can just log in with your GitHub to Vercel, Vercel.com. Okay. There you go. And these are my two projects I have right now, but you can ignore those for now. And let's bring this back here. So connect and deploy your project. Next, you'll be taken to the screen where you can select and import the GitHub you just created. Do we need to push? Let's see here. Uh, okay, so let's push this to uh, GitHub first. So I'm gonna stop the local host for a second. I'm gonna clear my terminal. I will type in git status. Just go ahead and see what I'm going to be changing. Okay, then I'll do git add dot, which will add everything to be committed. Clear. Then I'll do git commit flag m. So a message, uh, let's see here. Uh, finished tutorial parts one through five. Okay, and then we need to go to this repository we just made, and we can we can just copy everything here. Push an existing repository from the command line. Let's just copy this, paste in our terminal, press enter, and we have an issue. Okay, so I need to do something special. You will probably not have this issue, so I'm just gonna change one thing here. Uh, okay, I need to change this to GitHub. You probably will not have this issue. Remote origin already exists. Okay, so I have to remove uh, git. Let's do some live debugging. Uh, git how to remove remote origin. Git remote remove origin. Okay, let me try what I had before again. Okay, and could not read permission. Okay, I'm gonna pause here and try to debug this real quick. All right, I'm hoping this will work now. Let's go ahead and press enter here. Okay, I have to remove. Ah, I have to remove the origin. What was the command again? Git remote remove origin. Okay, let's come back here, copy this. Change this to test. Okay, we're good. And let's go back to our GitHub. Okay, it's right here. And then let me refresh the page. And now we have all our files in the <clears throat> repository. Sorry about that. You should not run into the issue that I had. It's because I'm working with multiple GitHub accounts. And so, Vercel, connect and deploy your project. Okay, so let's go to Vercel. So now that we hit, make sure your GitHub files are all here. And then let's go to Vercel and click on add new project. And then we can import a GitHub repository. So mine are already loaded. I'm gonna import the YouTube Next.js dashboard import and before I continue let's see if there's more instructions 
Uh, just hit deploy. Just hit deploy, because it already knows it's a Next.js framework. Cool. So you, you, right now we're deploying the project, so... Uh, Vercel makes it really easy to deploy, especially with Next.js projects. In like about a minute or so, you can just share this project with all your friends now, at this point. So it's, right now it's building. Uh, it's the same thing that would happen if you would be doing npm run build here. Compile selectually, it's linting, checking for TypeScript stuff. It's generating static pages, finalizing the opposition, collecting build traces. Okay, these are all our pages. Showing you which pages are rendered as static pages, which ones are dynamic. Looks like everything so far is a static page. Congratulations, you have deployed a project to Purcell. Get some confetti. And we can just click this. And we have our link. YouTube. Next, yes, I'll, I'll make it a little bigger. Right, so this is a live link. You can go to this right, as you're watching this video, you can go to this link right now. And go to this video. And the pages should work, like slash dashboard, right? Invoices, customers, okay? So this is the live thing. If we change anything locally, it's not gonna change here, obviously. So let me go ahead and close this. Okay. So here's the cool thing now. Now when we're working in our project, every time we push to GitHub, it'll update our, it'll redeploy our application automatically. We don't have to redeploy ever again unless we have some kind of issue in the future. But if we're just doing like changing some components or pages, get commit, get push, it's gonna, first cell's gonna trigger and it's gonna redeploy and then boom, our website will be updated in a minute or two. Okay, so for cell, not only can you deploy websites, you can also have instance to one free Postgres database um, on the free tier, which is what I have. So create a Postgres database, we're going to go to storage and we're going to go to Postgres serverless SQL create um, and accept this and it's powered by Neon which is a really great uh, check out Neon you can also get a Postgres database there they're doing really good stuff over there with um, next door create new Postgres continue so they're calling it Next.js dashboard Postgres I am going to call it I'm just going to call it, um, let's see, I'm going to call it, uh, I'm just going to call it YouTube Postgres because I might want to reuse this database later, so I don't want to call it the dashboard, but you can call it whatever you want. Uh, database name doesn't really matter. So next yes, dashboard Postgres, I'm going to call it YouTube Postgres. I said I'm going to change that to Destocot, yeah, that's, that's my GitHub name here. So, yeah. And then US East, uh, DC sounds good for me. Pick your closest, closest location. Create. Okay, and then we can just go to connect. And what do they want from us now? Go to env.local tab. So right over here. These are all the environment variables we need. And we are going to copy them. Okay, so we have an env example. And are we going to rename it? Yes, let's rename env.example to dot env dot. Okay, so dot env. Okay. And we are going to copy all these environment variables. Okay. And we're going to replace. These Postgres ones here. Don't don't replace the auth ones. We didn't get to that yet. So I'm gonna just paste that and try. I think I will delete this um, database once this tutorial is over. So I don't care if you see my um, variables right now. But do not show these variables to anybody. These are environment variables. They're meant to be kept secret. Okay. I'm gonna close my env file. I'm gonna Go to dot get ignore. And I'm gonna make sure I have it. See, make sure your dot env is in your dot get ignore. Make sure when you type in git status, 
you do not see .env. That's .env example. That's okay. We deleted it or renamed it. Uh, so make sure .env is added to your .getIgnore, and make sure it's not showing up in Git status. We do not want to push the .env to GitHub. Okay, so now our Postgres setup. Let's let's bring up the. Let me clear my terminal. We can go back to. Okay, now he wants to install this npm install adverse cell postgres package this is what we're going to be used to connect to our database okay that's installed we can double check in our package json so right here for cell postgres let me close out all these components seed your database so we're going to add a seed script let's see here comma and then seed and we have node-r.env slash config dot slash scripts slash seed dot js. So config dot env slash config. So our node is um, like our node.js. So they want us to run the seed file, which I believe is a JavaScript file, right? So we can run it. Yeah. So seed dot js lives in scripts folder, which it says here. And we're going to run it with the node, um, node.js, and then we are registering .env slash config, which should be installed. Yeah. And that just means we are registering our environment variables in that .env file. So if we don't have this, then it won't read the environment variables. So we cannot connect to the, the database. Okay. Um, and now we can run npm run seed, which will run this script. Let's go ahead and real quick and look inside the seed script and see what's going on. So uh, we're getting db from at for cell postgres. And then we're grabbing the placeholder data from invoices, customers, revenue, revenue users. So let's go ahead and look at that real quick again. So in our lib placeholder data. So just yeah, users, it's an array of users, customers, an array of customers, invoices, an array of invoices where each customer ID is associated with a customer's ID. And so each customer has a invoice. Uh, revenue is just uh, an array of months in revenue. And then we're exporting all four of these arrays. Okay, so we're bringing these arrays into seed. And we're also bringing in bcrypt. So bcrypt is a library that will hash our passwords. Okay, so we are doing the, before, let me go scroll to the bottom real quick. There's a lot going on here. I'm gonna see if I can just say it quickly. Okay, so this is the main function. We are connecting to our database. And then we are running four functions. Seed user, seed customer, seed invoices, seed revenue. We're passing in the client, our database client. And once we're done, we will end the connection. And this is how we start it. Main, uh, we're invoking the function and then we're doing a dot catch. Just in case something happens, we will log an error has occurred while trying to attempt the database. So we only need to look at one of these because they're all pretty much the same. So let's go look at users. Seed users and where we got here? Seed. I think it's important to like know what, what's going on. Um, so async function, seed users it has to be async because we're doing reaching out to our database. So we're, we're doing raw SQL queries here. So await client.sql create extension if not exists UUID. So saying, hey, if we don't have the UUID extension, let's create it. Uh, so UUID extension basically lets us use UUIDs and UUIDs are basically um, unique identifiers, UUID generator. So we have, we're we gonna have our IDs all look like this instead of like one, two, three, four. So these are more randomized, more um, less guessable IDs. Okay, so here's a, um, let me see here. This is a SQL uh, create table. So create table, if it does not exist, called users, as ID, UUID, a name, as uh, text, email, text, password, text. And then the email has to be unique. So we can have, you know, users can't have this, uh, different users can't have the same email. 
Okay, and then we'll say a little log here. We created the users table and then inserted data into the users table. So we're using promise.all, where we're mapping each user, which if you remember, there's only one user in our placeholder data. We will hash the password and then we will return this SQL query. Insert into users ID, name, email, password, where the values is user.id, user.name, users.email, and then instead of the password, we're passing in the hashed password, which is the hash of the password. And on con conflict, ID do nothing. So this means that if this ID exists already in our database, then don't, don't do anything. Don't, don't do any inserting. So once we inserting, inserted users, then we just log seated insert users.length users. And then we return create table users.insert table. So we're returning this, but we're not, we're not doing anything with this in case we want to use this later. And then we're doing catch errors. So yeah. Let's go ahead and just run the script. So we're gonna again we're gonna seed users, uh, users, customers, revenue, and invoices. So we can run npm run seed. Well, let's show the logs. Let me. Okay, hopefully everything goes well. So yeah, to so create a, create a user table, seeded one user. Create a customers table, seeded ten customers. Create an invoices table, seeded. 15 invoices, created revenue, seeded to 12 revenue. Okay, so our table is seeded. And quiz time, what is seeding in the context of databases? Deleting all the data? Nope. Importing the schema? Nope. Populating the database with initial set of data. Okay, that's what we want. Okay, so exploring our database. So we can go back to first cell, and we can go to all databases here. We can go to, let me just refresh the page. Maybe it'll show up. Right, so here we go. Here's my database. Click it. And I can go to, right, scroll down to data. And now if I see this drop down bar, choose a table, I should be able to see my tables here. So let's check it out. So in my users, I have my user. This is the hashed password. And then what else? We should have customers, a bunch of customers. And it's the UUID I was talking about before. Let's also see we have invoices and we should have revenue. Cool. Okay, so our database was successfully seeded and we can val validate that by looking into our thing. Let's also run a SQL query just to verify. You can say select star. So give me everything from uh, customers. Semicolon. Query ran successfully, and now here we have everything from customers. Okay, pretty much what we saw before, but let's just, we can test it out with a query, right? It's nice. Go back here, executing queries. You can switch to query tab. Oh, okay, so this, to interact with your database. This section supports standard SQL commands. For instance, putting drop table customers will delete customers table. So be careful, don't, don't do this. Uh, let's run our first database query. Paste the following queries. Okay, so we should have just done this in the first place. So, so we are selecting the in, the um, the amount column from the invoices table and the name column from the customers table from invoices, and we're joining the table uh, customers on invoices dot customer ID equals to customer ID, where invoices dot amount is six six six. Uh, it's a little confusing. Let me see real quick. Uh, join customers on. Okay, yeah. So we're we're, we're, comb we're we're combining the invoices and customers table on the uh, customer ID column, and then from that join table, we will select the invoices dot amount and the customers dot name from invoices, and only where the invoices dot amount is six six six. So it should have one item, I believe. Right. Yeah. There you go. Amount name. We're selecting the amount from invoices.amount and name from customers.name. And so let's see here. It's amount 666 from name Evil Rabbit. What customer does the invoice bring? Evil Rabbit. Okay, that was a bit long. Sorry, I might have uh, ranted a bit for a bit. So uh, I'm going to stop here and we're going to move on to part seven soon. Part six is complete.